everybody. Welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today, I'd like to talk about something that I don't think I've ever talked about on my channel before. I just, um, I haven't felt like I was ready to talk about it, to be honest. It's block chords. And this is just going to be kind of an introduction to block chords today. Um, I'd like to make some more videos about it, and I'll, uh, I feel like I'm prepared to do it. I, I just don't want to make this one too long. Block chords are something that I've added to my playing late in life. I, I didn't really learn how to do it in college, and so everything I've learned, I've learned from recordings that I've listened to, trying to copy the way that people sound, and frankly, from other people's YouTube videos. Block chords. It's a style of piano playing that's very helpful when you're playing with a trio, and it can also be really helpful when you're playing solo piano, too. George Shearing is probably the pioneer of block chords. Listen to him play on Lullaby of Birdland and see what you can figure out from what he's doing. And it's nice, we've got a video so I can show you his hands. Listen again very carefully and notice that the melody note that he's playing is also the same as the bottom note that he's playing. See if you can single out where the melody's at and try to hear it in both octaves. Now you can see the basics of what a block chord is. A block chord is taking the melody to any song and then doubling it an octave down, so say your melody's on an F, and then playing about three more notes in the middle to create a beautiful, dense kind of harmony. So say your chord is F major, there's your melody note as well. There are a couple ways, and you can be creative with it, a couple ways to stack up your notes in the middle to get that nice, dense sound. One of them is to add these three notes. The three and the five and the six. This is a very settled sound. It's also kind of an old timey sound. When you hear um, a song, and, and I am gonna use the way you look tonight. So when you hear it end, you know, if you hear uh, just the way you look to, if you hear this night, you can hear that D in there and it just kind of sounds old timey somehow. It's settled and, and just kind of, yeah, old. Um, if, if I were to do it with a major seven, it's a little more modern sounding, right? But it also just doesn't sound as settled. So we're gonna talk a lot today about how it sounds to play a major six chord and how that leaves you with a settled feeling as opposed to how it sounds to play a major seventh chord and that kind of a feeling. Now, we've got some options. If F is our chord and F is our note, our melody note, we can do like this. We could do like this. We could try playing them both. We could even add the G. I mean, those are, those are pretty much all the notes that we can add and still have it sound like F major. And it's nice to play around with them. It's not a bad idea to just play different combinations, see the kind of sound that you like. And I, I'm gonna encourage that. For everything I say today that, ha that seems like it has a set way about it, I'm also gonna encourage you to explore because you might find you know, something that's you. And that's what this kind of music, this jazz music is all about. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is, is this idea of what is diatonic. So if I'm playing in the key of F and I'm going to build triads all the way up, I can build F, G minor, A minor, B flat major, C major, D minor, E diminished, and F major again. All of those triads are considered diatonic to the key of F. And you can do it in any key, Just you just have to rem remember your key signature. So if I did it in C, it would be the easiest. All of the flavors of those chords, major, minor, major, whatever, they're the same as they were in F. They just look different because it's in a different key with a different key signature. So what I like to do when I'm going to try to harmonize a song using block chords and add that sound to my playing, I'm gonna look for a section of a song that has diatonic harmony or diatonic chords. And that's why The Way You Look Tonight works really nicely. Just about the first eight bars of this tune are all 
chords that I played for you right there. You can see that D7 is a slight variation. We could actually make that a D minor if we wanted to, and I think some people do sometimes, uh, instead of... Uh D7, we could go. We could. All the way up until that point, the song is using these and only these. And whenever you see that happen, whenever you see a section of a song that just has diatonic chords or chords that come from the triads of the key like that, from the notes of the major scale, it's a section that could possibly be harmonized in block chords. We've got this melody, right? It's also important to ask yourself if the melody goes out of the key. The melody never goes out of the key for the first 16 bars of this song. So that's a, it's, a, it's an opportunity. Anytime you see a melody that doesn't go out of the key, think of it as an opportunity to harmonize in block chords. Now, I do wanna say, I thought about trying to make you a PDF for this, but it's one of these ideas that is a concept and I don't want you to read it. I, I'd really like you not to have something to look at to guide your fingers. I'd, I'd really like you to find your own way and you know, teach you to fish instead of catching the fish for you. Um, it's like helping your kids with your homework, right? You're gonna help them through it, but you're not gonna do it for them unless maybe it's like 3 a.m. and they're really frustrated. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I would never do that. So we're gonna take this melody and we're gonna put it in octaves like George Shearing might have done. And let's just go that far. Now, I really like to harmonize the scale, uh, in, at least in the first iteration of this that I'm gonna show you today. I like to harmonize it in, in basically in two ways. And one way is to use this major six sound when we're on the Fs, but when we move to Gs, I, I like to go for G minor, G minor seven, like that. So you're gonna put these notes in between. We've got the three and the five and the seven. Then when we get to the As, I'm gonna come back to F6. It's nice and settled sounding again. When we get to the B flats, that's a note that could be in G minor. So I'm gonna play the G minor seven notes in the middle of it. It sounds great, doesn't it? We get up to the Cs, those are back in F6, right? We get to the Ds, those are in G minor. E is an exception to this rule, so you can't find E in either one of those chords. It's not in F6 and it's not in G minor. So I'm just gonna ask you to treat it like it's um, a C7 chord. So if we're here, we're just gonna do that. We're just gonna put the five and the seven and the one of, of C7 right there with the E's. And then we're back to F6. So let's go up like that. I hope you're at your piano. If you're not, get there. So F6, G minor 7, F6, G minor 7, F6, G minor 7, C7, and F6. And now come down. F6, C7, G minor 7, F6, G minor 7, F6, G minor 7, F6. Now you can see I'm just using my um, my index finger here. It doesn't mean I, I will always do that. I think I'm doing it so you can see better. Now here's a really cool trick. Sometimes if you want, in order to get really hip, you can take your fingers and stack them up. Just go three below where you're gonna end up. So if we're on the F and we've got this kind of chord, if you put your fourth finger on this D, third finger on E flat, second finger on E, and thumb on F, you can do this kind of action. Yeah, and then you hit your chord. I'm sure you've heard that before. I did it at the beginning of this video because I love it. You can pick and choose your moments. I don't think it sounds very good to do it all the time. I think it's like an accent that you can use. So, so if I was gonna play the melody to this song, which is, and just go that far, I'd stack up an F6 right here and then another F6 here. And I might stack up my fingers here and... Right, or I could do it this way. So, you could do it either way. I like the first way best, I think. 
And then here we go. G minor, F6, G minor, 7, G minor, 7, F6, G minor, 7, right? I mean, it takes us that far. We could go a little further with it before the song leaves the key. Um, all right, here's our E, right? This is when we change to C7. But here we get to the C minor chord and things shift a little bit because C minor, F7, B flat major seven, that's a two, five, one in the key of B flat. So as soon as you come out of the key, you run into more problems. I almost don't wanna get into it today because I think the video will be long enough anyway. And I don't think I will go on past it today, but I will on another day. So for now, I'm gonna move on to the next step or just, it's not even a next step. It's, it's like a different step, that's all. And I said it at the beginning. Instead of doing a major six chord, you could try to see how a major seven chord sounds on all of this. Now, I do want to, I want to caution against having a, a half step on top like this. I think a whole step sometimes is okay. Um, but a half step, I mean, it's going to create, it's going to create a totally different sound. It's not going to be settled. It's not going to feel old timey. It's going to feel a little newer and it's going to feel a little rougher. I think it might be the sound you're going for. So, it's nice like this, right? We're going to start the melody here. If we put it in, in the middle there, I think it's really cool. But then when we come down to here, again, that's, that's a lot of dissonance. So you might consider doing this one here with F major 7 and then coming back to F6. I think that sounds really nice. You can kind of hear this note giving way to this note, right? the voice leading of the tune, like how the voices get from, from where they're at to where they're going. Then we can do the same thing, but try it with an F major instead of F6. So same, just G minor seven. You could even consider, um, you know, making your harmony come down here because that's technically, it's a C7 chord. But right back here. I like all of that. I think it sounds great. Well, let's slide up to it. <laughs> right now we're on C. So that's another one that we could make F6, but we're going to make it F major seven right now. G minor seven, F major seven, G minor seven. And then back to the uh, C7. You, you can mess around there. You can, you can try to do a diminished sound if you want. You could, you could, you, I don't know, you could try try different things if you'd like to, but I'm just sticking with C7 for now. And then, or, so that's an idea, right? You can, now you can have the option of using a combination of both of those at the same time or one or the other. And I like that a lot. I recommend taking this idea of major six chord, minor seven chord, major six chord, minor seventh chord, um, and doing it in a lot of keys, at least the keys that come up often. So maybe B flat, you know, right? Just put it in an octave, stick some notes in the middle, work your way up. It'll be slower for you probably. And here we get to the A's, right? We're just gonna change to the five of what key we're in. We're in B flat. We're gonna just put the notes of F7 in there. And then I'd do it the exact same way, but I'd make it a major seventh chord. Again, it's, it's a little bad when it's on the top. Maybe do a combination of when it's gonna be that way, right? Maybe, maybe start like that and then do it. Now move to that and here too. And then here, come right back to the six. That's a good habit to get into. Maybe you really decide that you like that sound. Now, go back, do it again, and stack up your fingers. Four, two, four three, two, one. Right? Maybe do it here too. Maybe here too. And maybe here. Just to get get yourself in the in the. It's a it's a good finger strengthening. 
go slowly if you can't. Some places will be easier than, than others. Others you kind of have to sneak your fingers up in between the black keys to, uh, to make them happen. But anyway, that's a, that's a tasty little thing you can do to just, like I said, get a little more hip. All right, that's as far as I'm going today. I will make another one. Make sure to follow my Instagram. I'm posting small lessons on my Instagram nearly every day, and a lot of them are about block chords. I hope this uh, is fun for you. Um, for right now, if you're new at this, do it just with major tunes, songs that stay in the diatonic realm over a major kind of place. It we can work it out for minor. I mean, that's what George Shearing did on Lullaby of Birdland, and, and we can do that another day. But for now, see how many tunes you can find that just stay diatonic. They stay in the key. The melody stays in the key. The chords stay in the key. And these are the songs that you're going to be able to do this with to make block chord harmonizations. I hope you have fun with it. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.